Over the last few years, I've been working to make my home as green as possible. I've had solar panels installed. I've got a Tesla Powerwall. I've been working uh, to install some My Energy products to uh, heat my water, charge my car, and do various other things around the house. So in this video, I'm going to show you an overview of all how all of my solar products are working together to, to make my house more green. So if that's something of use to you, stick around and watch the video and I'll catch you soon. Hi, welcome to Project Smart Home. My name is Paul. So something a little bit different today, rather than just focusing on home automation, what I'm gonna do is take you through the solar installation that I've got at my home. So I'm gonna be covering a few different elements um, that I've had deployed or installed over the last few years. I started off with solar panels and then went on and had a battery installed. And then uh, more recently in the last six months, I've had a air source heat pump installed. And a couple of months ago, finally uh, an EV car charger. So I'm gonna take you through at a really high level, all those different things and how they all fit together. Then what I'm going to do in subsequent videos is take you through in much more detail how they're actually working, how they're actually kind of um, working together and making you know my, my house green and how I'm saving money and those sorts of things. So today's video is just a just an overview, but what I'll do is I'll take you through the different pieces of, of um, everything, how everything's made up. So to, to start with my home, um, obviously connection to the uh, to the grid where the power comes in before I started my solar journey into my consumer unit feeding my house and a separate consumer unit in the garage which is probably fairly standard for homes in the UK um, and it's probably about two years ago I had my solar panels installed and um, I used a company just outside of Oxford called Solar KW and they did a fantastic job getting those solar panels installed and the inverter installed as well. So based on my energy consumption at the time, um, it was recommended that I went, went with, uh, it's like a six, six or seven K solar array, but based on the fact that I'm in a bungalow, I've got lots of space for panels. The panels were 400 quid each, something like that. So. I took the decision at the time just to load up as, as many as I could get onto the roof and that came to 23 panels that I could have fitted and my panels are facing south um, east so I get a lot of solar panel solar power generated during the day and it kind of tapers off into early evening so I get pretty good coverage not 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 as perfect as as it would be if it was south facing but it's pretty good as i say i've got an 8.7 kilowatt array now and a eight kilowatt um solar edge inverter so where does that leave me then so at this point in time when i just had the panels um sun would shine on the the solar panels obviously and generate electricity that can be used in the house if the house isn't consuming all the electricity that was being generated, then that 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 um, excess power would go back onto the grid. And at the time, and I'm still with so um, still with um, uh, Octopus Energy now, um, but at the time I was just getting paid for putting electricity back onto the grid. It was less than I was being charged for, so. Um, I wanted to consume as much electricity as I could. So when the sun was shining, we tried to use various appliances around the house to try and use that, use that electricity. But obviously a lot was still going back onto the grid in those summer months. Um, so that kind of led me to think and I actually ordered the, the Tesla Powerwall at the same time as the solar panels. But due to the um, delay in Tesla being able to ship those at the time, there was something like a six month delay. So I got the opportunity, if you like, to, to just run the solar panels for a few months uh, initially while I was waiting for the battery. So when the battery was installed, then obviously that gave me the opportunities to start storing some power as well. Um, 
as you can see, I, I went with at the time a couple of years ago, the Tesla Powerwall 2 and the gateway. So the way that that works is um, the gateway connects directly to the incoming power into the house and that feeds the power wall. Um, so if power, a power loss is detected from the grid, then the gateway would detect that loss and switch me directly over to the, uh, the Tesla power wall to use. Um, so the benefit of that is if I'm in a situation where I'm consuming the amount of energy being generated by the solar panels. If the house isn't using everything, I can put that en additional energy into the battery as well, rather than putting it back onto the grid and saving it for use um, on days that we don't have any sunshine or days that, uh, or overnight, for example, where obviously the sun isn't shining. So you want to consume your energy from the battery. Um, I did move at that point in time onto a, a tariff from Octopus that allows you to charge the battery. I think it was something like between um, four and seven in the morning. So I could actually, you know, if the Tesla Powerwall felt it was appropriate, it could um, it could pull cheaper energy down from the grid at that point in time save it in the battery and consume that during the day if it was needed if we're not getting the solar so ideal for the autumn and winter months so that put me in a pretty good position where i could um, either consume the electricity myself sell the electricity back to the grid or store the electricity excess excess energy into the battery or even pull uh, pull energy from the grid to store in the battery um, during those those octopus cheaper electricity hours between four and seven in the morning so that was a pretty good pretty good position to be in and we ran like that for for a good year or so and when i go into the detailed videos of these i'll i'll plan to show um how much that cost um and the savings that I, i've been made at that point in time so back in we are in um end of august now so back in february time i had um a daikin air source heat pump installed the altherma 3rw so the main where my uh, mouse point is pointing now so the main air source heat pumps installed outside and then i've got the controls for the daikin inside in my loft uh, a new consumer unit was deployed by the company that did the uh, installation along with a new 250 litre water tank. So again, that was great. It allowed me to get rid of my boiler so there's no gas coming into the house now. So at this point in time, completely electric and everything's running either on power from the grid or solar power that's been generated or, or energy that's in the, in the battery. An additional thing that I had done, in fact, before I go into that, what I'll do is, again, I, I, I'm with Octopus. I switched my tariffs again to what they call a cozy tariff, and that's given me the ability to get cheaper rates of electricity between 4 and 7 in the morning, 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And additionally, more recently, they've exp expanded that, that tariff or that, um, that plan to include an additional slot between 10 p.m. and midnight. So in any of those three windows, I can use cheaper electricity. So when I'm configuring my, when I've configured my power wall, I've told the power wall about all these different rates of electricity and the intelligence that's built in the power wall will act appropriately. So if the battery is running low on power, then it will charge up. If it's not generated enough power from the sun, it'll charge that battery at those cheaper rates. And it'll also make sure the battery has enough power in it to take me through the peak rate times, which is 4 p.m. till 7 p.m. when everybody traditionally comes home from work and starts cooking the dinner and putting the kettle on and things like that. Make sure that I can get through that period of time without having to draw from the grid. So at that time I will be using purely the battery. And if there's anything left, it'll, you know, it'll take me through the night as well. Um, so that, that's, that's been a great tariff for me. So as, as I was about to say, additionally, when I was having the air source heat pump installed, I had the, um, the company who is Hello Renewables, 
based in Fleet in Hampshire in the UK. They installed for me an Eddy from um, My Energy, along with the Harvey, which is kind of the control device up here. And these um, these kind of purpley coloured lines are CT clamps that are measuring things like power coming in from the grid, power going out from the grid, solar power being generated, and those sorts of things. So it can um, detect if there's any additional power that's been generated that's going back onto the grid. That power can be redirected through to the my edit my my energy eddy and into the hot water tank so therefore i'm essentially using either cheap electricity or um, solar to heat my water tank which means that the air source heat pump doesn't ha then have to do that obviously it does at certain times when there's no solar power or overnight or whatever but you know it's, it's another way of leveraging or storing that energy that's been generated by the sun and storing it in your water tank So finally, um, probably a couple of months ago now, I bought, uh, finally bought a, a Tesla Model Y, which I'd had my eye on for quite a while. Finally bought one of those. And sticking with the My Energy brand, I went with the Zappi charger. I've done a separate video on the installation of uh, the Zappi and how that's all configured and how that's working and how that works in this whole solar my energy ecosystem but essentially it's leveraging the same um the same solar capability so if additional solar um power is being generated during the day that isn't going into the house isn't going into the battery isn't going into the water then it's rather than going back onto the grid it's been redirected to my car assuming it's been plugged in also, if I'm in one of those cheap rate windows, I've configured the Zappi charger to charge the car as well. So it's quite common that my car will be charging between um, 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning when it's cheaper rate, assuming that it needs that additional top up as well. So finally, then everything here is connected to the Internet. So we've got a Powerwall um, Tesla app that um that i can see i can visualize how the power is going into the battery and i'll try and show that on the screen now uh, as well as that the tesla app also shows me in the app itself how the car's charging as well and then i've also got um daykin um app, app as well so i can schedule when i heat my water or uh, the heating comes on and I've also got a Solar Edge app as well, which um, kind of shows me when um, when the solar has been generated, which panels are being used, panels that are being gener that generating the most, depending on you know the sun coming across the sky and hitting those panels. So it's really good information. But the the downside is you're going into what a Tesla app, a Daikin app, a Solar Edge app. Lots of and the My Energy app as well to see when um, My Energy is making use of that additional solar to heat your water or charge your car. So there's what three or four different apps there. So as I've kind of said in other videos, I'm kind of pulling all of that information together into Home Assistant as well to help me visualize actually what's going on in one place. It's more a tool for visualizing data and information in my opinion you can't control an awful lot about this kind of ecosystem of, of solar infrastructure I've got. Um, but I'll show you, I'll show you on the screen a couple of snapshots of those as I'm talking through this. Um, and that's it. That's kind of what I wanted to go through today. There's tons and tons of information about this, um, how this works behind all of this. And what I do is, what, what I plan to do is go into each element of this in a lot more detail to show you how it's working but to kind of kick off the series i just wanted to to provide that high level overview um hopefully that's been of use uh, if you've got any questions there's probably i've probably you know put more questions into your mind at this stage than i've answered them but if you do have any questions then let me know in the comments below 
and I'll try and incorporate any answers into the into the other vi other videos or I'll reply in the comments as well. But thank you for your time. Appreciate watching and um, hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.